is the slurpy problem. Okay, I, I think this one is, is good because it's kind of a lot of work. It's more tedious than the other one. But if you get all the concepts in this one, you're ready to rock the test. Okay, if you get all the nuances of what's going on here, pretty prepared for the test. Okay, the other one's a little less work but a little trickier conceptually. This one's, I think, a little bit more straightforward, just a bit. Okay, um, I'm going to draw a picture of it. Dot M1, tension. And two, fully, and capital M. Um, Alex asked a really good question. He said that they told me that the force of friction between M1 and the surface is F, and the force of friction between is 2F. Does that mean this is twice the mass? Yeah. No, it doesn't. Because I don't know what these boxes are made out of. It doesn't tell me that they are identical boxes. So maybe this one's made out of plastic, and this one's made out of plywood, and that's going to give them very different coefficients of friction. Okay, because we don't know that, we can't know anything else. We don't know the relationship between these masses. Um, we know that the system is moving this way, so that tells us which direction of friction is pointing for both of these, which is the opposite. Yeah, Tad goes, oh. that's right, good job. Thank you, Tad. Um, it's pointing up the slope like that. It's opposing motion. Um, we also know the velocity is constant, right? Which means what? Means what? Yeah, I know it's so exciting. Okay. Um, what are you looking for? Oh, first three body diagram. Right? La la la. What forces do I have? And Gravity. And, and normal force. And, and friction. Friction pointing the way Tad just told me. And done. If you choose to draw components, they need to be how what they need to look like. Dotted. They need to be dotted. I don't want you drawing components and everything that might also be forces. But we also know that this is a beta. Prove it or memorize it. Okay, that's part A. Part B, we need to find the coefficient of kinetic friction between block one and the surface. We're killed. Um, for this type of free body diagram, do we always keep it like F separate? F for force of friction separate? Like mean? that F, do we always keep it separate from T? Like, could we add the two vectors? <coughs> oh, I said, do you want to draw one big vector and write it as T plus F? Yeah. Uh, that's not wrong, but it could lead to trouble. So draw them separately. Okay? Because they're different. They're, they're caused by different things and they'll change differently. Yeah, don't, don't add them together. It's not wrong, but. Don't do it. Okay, um, so this is a really important part, and here's a learning moment for you. What does it say right below that dotted slope? What does that say? Express your Okay, they are telling you your givens. You're not allowed to have any variables except for these and the answers for the subsequent parts. Mm -hmm. Whoop. So since it says we're allowed to use data, are we allowed to use that? function like sine or cosine determinants? Just as much as you're allowed to use plus, minus, division. Okay, so maybe I just have the answer on mastering physics because I thought I had the answer and it told me that. The last one on mastering physics? I don't remember. The one with the, the chandelier? Yes. Yeah. Someone, someone came question. to me this morning saying that they, um, they're like, mastering physics still gives me three tries. Right. Yeah. They say it's formatted poorly. Right. I, I, looked, I was like, I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I can't figure it out. So I think it's a trig identity because they had something in the uh, denominator that was like um, uh, something like this in the denominator. And I was like, I don't know how that reduces. Cynthia? You just have to put parentheses around the like I looked up in the help section with all the symbols and everything. Cynthia Lynn, everybody. Thank you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Wait, what's this? <laughs> okay, these are your givens. Um, yeah, pass the word on that. Tell your friends. Um, these are the givens, and so um, those are the only variables I'm allowed to look for, and I'm solving from UK, right? So, fundamentally, there's really only one equation that has an UK in it, and that's the force of friction. Physics is fine, right? Um, this is the normal force between the slope and block one. So I need to find that in order to get my answer because I'm allowed to have friction in my answer. Yes. I love that off my list again, sorry. I'm allowed to have friction in my answer, so all I need to solve for is normal force. Get UK. It's 
gruesome trying to solve for friction in terms of these variables. You could do it, but save yourself the agony. The, the test is a time to test. You're hurrying. So uh, I'm going to do sum of forces in the y direction. Is it accelerating in the y? No. No. Over time, you do not see it lifting off or sinking down. Um, assuming for, of course, that's my x and that's my y. Right? Um, up is positive, so normal force minus m1g sine theta. We're far enough along, I'll just show you where that came from, right? Mm -hmm. Easy. That's the answer? Isn't it cosine? Yeah. Okay, uh, now that you see the answer, do you get it? Yeah, that was so much easier than I tried to make it. Good. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Yeah. How many people overcome? Okay. okay. Part C. Determine the value of the suspended mass capital. Yes, Guys, what's the test question here, Please. You sound like you're figuring it out. Oh, never mind. Yes. Tony? How do you know when you do uh, You don't necessarily. Experience will teach you that. And so typically, go ahead and do both. Um, I didn't show it, but you could have solved for it and like I didn't need it. What I did was I said, here's an equation that has a UK in it, and I'm looking for UK. The only part of this equation I don't know is normal force. Normal force comes from some forces in the Y. I only did some forces in the Y. I realized I had a good enough synonym for normal force that I could put in here. Um, would we have pulleys in the coordinate system? You know how it moves here? It would pull that always confuses me. So here, when it moves over the pulley, is it okay that gravity becomes part of the edge? That's totally okay that gravity is part of the x. It's a one-dimensional problem. Yeah, you um this next part, I'll show it to you two ways. First I'll do it in a partial system approach, and then I'll show you how you can magically take that that you know, stick it up like that and say gravity's pointing that way for it, and solve the problem in one step. So I'll show you both ways. Okay? Let's do it in pieces first because pieces is a little bit more understandable, it's a little less scary. Okay? Um and, and this kind of answers your question, Penny, of how do I know when to do certain equations, right? It says give me an find capital M. So I'm going to write an equation with capital M in it. Here's my free body diagram for the hanging mass. Tension and mg accelerating? No. Nope. Nope. Still moving at a constant speed. I'm not allowed to use T in my final answer. It's not one of the givens. So that means I need to find an equation with T. So I'm going to choose to make this my system to include T. If I include both of those blocks, I don't have to worry about the work in between them. That's, that's as relevant as a molecular bond, right? It's an internal force. And so it cancels itself off, and this is my free body diagram. I've got two different normal forces. I've got two different MGs. That's a long word. I've got two different frictions. And I've got this tension here. These tensions are the same because for this class, tension over pulley is always constant. Okay? Tension in a single piece of rope does not change. Is the tension in this section of rope the same as this T right here? No. No. Why not? Is it is it greater than or less than and why? Alex. It's uh, it's greater than. Why? Because um, that system is pulling because uh, because acceleration is zero, you know that the force behind that system equals 
that system or like because those two are working together to because those two are working together to dis to offset the big M and uh, the big M is and and the big M is not working with M two to offset M one. It's bigger. <coughs> How about this? How about this? This rope is pulling one max. Yeah. This rope is pulling two max. This rope has more tension. Oh. You, you, you were saying that, I'm just helping you put it in a slightly more elegant phrase. But I heard you say that. So, this rope is pulling just one mass. This rope has to move two inertias. Different inertias, not as in two and him. And so it has more tension than it. Cool. That makes sense. Not really relevant to our problem, but conceptually important for the units. All right. Um, this is my free body diagram. It looks scary, but it's not. Don't be intimidated. There's x and y. I'm trying to solve for tension so that I can put tension in here and get an equation for capital M. So, what direction should I sum forces in, guys? I'm looking for tension. Which direction is tension in? It's in the x direction, right? I want to sum my forces in this x dimension to get the equation for tension. So, um, sum of forces in the x is zero because my acceleration is zero. And I've got a lot of forces. Let's see, if up is positive, then it's tension plus 2f plus f three minus m1g sine theta minus m2g sine theta equals zero. Woo! Let me show you where all those horses came from. Check it out. So you can just set up. There is M1 G sine theta. There is M2 G sine theta. There's F. There's 2 F. There's T. See? Thank you. Conceptually, so if you had two different objects, like and you consider it as one system, the total friction or the force of friction would just be those two frictions added together. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay, uh, if we rearrange this for T, just algebra. Can I can I do this? Is this gonna scare you? Of course. Now if that's T, I can plug it in over here and get my final answer. Was that a hand screen? Oh, I was gonna ask if in the like when you drew the free body diagram, if you could just combine the forces then like the M one and the G and the M two, like could you combine those in the normal forces and the frictions? Uh, yeah, just, just say it's like one block. Yeah. It, it's okay to do that. I think that the, 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 the thing you might have problems with is, is if you accidentally forget those also two frictions, that the net okay. friction of force would be 3F. As long as you remember that, it's fine. Okay. Um, okay, you want to see how to do one step? Yes. Here it goes. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's draw our system like this. See, I'm going to figure out why to do like this. Exactly. Right? Here's where gravity magically changes the direction right here. Hey, if this way freaks you out, don't even worry about this. Okay? There's never problems you have to do this on. You can always do this. Um, and so I get mg. I'm just going to draw my x forces. I'm leaving out the y forces, okay? mg, uh, 2f, f, m2g sine theta. M1 G sine theta, okay? And then I can say that zero is equal to, let's make this positive, MG plus F plus 2F minus M1 G sine theta minus M2 G sine theta. Look, it's the same thing. Whoa! That's what people say to Tebow, too. What's up? I'm not comparing myself to Tebow. Sorry. 
So guys, okay, this is a common frustration among students. What direction does tension point? Um, here's our dog toy of science. Dog toy of science. So um, I'm, I'm lowering the dog toy, right? The, the faucet's acting as a pulley. And so which direction is tension pointing from the dog toy's perspective for that? Which way is tension pointing? Uh, think about what it's doing. Gravity wants it to go down. Tension says, I'm going to keep you from going down as fast as you want to go down. Right? How about this? Um, now, which way is tension going? Uh, up. Gravity says, I want you to go down. And tension says, I want you to go up. Does that make sense for how to figure out which way tension is pointing? You've got to think about what is the force doing. Look at this picture. So this MG is trying to, um, I guess, bring them down the ramp. Right? The two forces of friction are resisting the motion down the ramp. The two forces of gravity, two components of gravity in the x direction for the separate boxes, are what's bringing it down the ramp. So if you think conceptually about what the forces are actively doing, it helps you figure out which direction they should go. Did I answer your question or did I just start talking? I guess you kind of did this. Doesn't that mean that the tension always goes away from the object it's acting on? Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, because if I have the dog toy of science sitting on my table, and I'm holding it through the string, I can't, like, go! I can't push the dog toy with my string, right? right. So the string's just going to get slack. I can, like, pull it. Yeah. So, yeah, so the tension wants to go from the object to the center of the room, towards the other end of the room. Like, the chest, the direction. My nervous 